Hello, I'm Emerald Lagasse, and welcome to The Essence of Emerald. You know, if you like poultry, you've probably prepared a lot of chicken and turkey. And chances are, though, you haven't cooked much with game birds. Well, today I'm going to work with some pheasant and some squab, two types of fowl most people only encounter in restaurants. I'm going to show you how you can prepare them at home from boning them to stuffing them and certainly cooking them right here on The Essence. Now, game birds, you know, are very popular in a lot of American restaurants these days. You can get pheasant dishes. And years ago, pheasant was very popular and the ever more popular pheasant on the glass. Well, today you see a lot of pheasant dishes and we use a lot of pheasant dishes in, uh, at Emeralds and at Nola as well. And one of my favorite game birds is also a little squab. Now this is the squab right here. You can find in a lot of grocery stores and gourmet markets. Uh, and what a squab is, is basically a, it's a young pigeon. Uh, it has a much more darker and livery tasting uh, than a pheasant, which is sort of tastes like a lot more like uh, between chicken and turkey. This is a pheasant right here that I have. And um, there's so many things that you can do with them. I mean, you can fry them. Uh, you can certainly debone them. You can stuff them. Uh, you, can, you can just cut them in half and you can pan saute them, uh, roast them, you can comb feed them. There's so many great things to do with game bird. But what I thought I would do is just um, show you quickly. You can either bone uh, a squab out. The way that any game bird is structured, whether it's a quail or even much larger as a simple chicken, they have this back, what they call the chicken backs, or in this case, the squab, and that's where this main bone is here, less meat and uh, the main bone. And what you can do, you can just sort of cut it on a V as I'm doing here. This is the back now. And what you can do is just, with a boning knife, you can, and then what you can do is just sort of take the back and remove the back right out. You see that? That's the whole back. And they even sell that as like little chicken backs. And once you remove that, you can split the breastbone. You remove, what you want to do is you want to remove that back. And then you're ready to start working. Now, if you wanted to split it, you could just split it and remove the breastbone and the rib cage here. Or you could leave it whole and just work the bones right back, leaving the legs on, etc. And I'm going to show you cooking one of those. But speaking about cooking, I'm going to do a little rice because at the restaurants, you know, we make all sorts of different flavored risottos and different rices that you can stuff these little birds and roast them. And boy, they make a fantastic, something a little bit different than just a, a dressing. And one of my favorite little rices, I get to add a little bit of oil inside of our skillet. One of my favorite little rices is a little foie gras rice. That's right, a little foie gras rice. I've got some cooked rice, just regular rice that's been cooked. I've got foie gras, which is a little duck liver. Uh, you can use anything that you like. It doesn't have to be liver. It could be perhaps maybe some crispy bacon or some ham or some tasso. But watch. We're going to add this uh, foie gras inside. And the reason why I'm adding that first is because we want to crisp it up a little bit as I'm doing right there, very quickly. And then, to simply finish this, we're going to add some shallot. And I'm actually going to add a little bit of fresh thyme. And you can foie gras just smelling the entire kitchen here. Now, you see how the foie gras is crispy? That's when I'm going to add the rice now. I'm going to add the rice. And what I'm going to do to stop a little bit of the cooking is add a little stock. We add a little bit of stock. It sort of moistens up the rice. And we're just going to cook that out. Not so that it's mushy. We're just moistening it up a little bit. And while it's just simmering and reducing, we're going to add a little bit of salt to give it some flavor. And then we're going to add some fresh ground pepper. And then right at the end, I'm going to add a little bit of fresh parsley and um, also a little bit of green, some green scallions, some green onions. And we're going to mix that all in there. 
not quite like a dirty rice or rice dressing as we call it in Louisiana but what this is going to be is a nice side accoutrement because coming up right after this I'm going to get to our game bird don't go away stay with me right here on the essence of emerald Welcome back. I'm Emeril Lagasse, and uh, this rice that we started, the little foie gras rice, I'm just turning the heat off right now. You see, it's got this mm, great taste and great texture. And we're ready for doing our squab dish. Now, let me just tell you, you can serve this rice as a little accoutrement with uh, any of your game birds. We're going to do a squab just with your great simple chicken. But also, you can also take this and stuff your bird with it and then just simply roast it. I was saying earlier, you know, that you do that traditional turkey. You got that traditional dressing that you do stuffed in the turkey and roasted. Well, you could do it with a simple delicious rice dressing like we just made. Or you can serve it as a, an accoutrement. Now, I've got my squab, and I showed you earlier about taking the back and the breast bones off. Well, that's exactly what I was talking about. Now, you could either cut it in half or leave it whole. Let's cut this one in half, shall we? We're not going to stuff it. We're going to do a little simple sautéed squab. And that's the little wing bone I got right there, that little joint of the wing bone. We're just going to remove them. And what we're going to do is we're going to take our squab. And you know the thing with squab, they, they cook very, very fast. And you don't really want to overcook squab. It sort of like would be cooking liver sort of well done. You don't really want to do that. You want to sort of keep it, at least I like to cook a medium rare. We're going to season our squab with a little bit of essence, that spice of paprika base with a little salt and cayenne and black pepper and white pepper. I've also got some herbs in that spice, a little basil and thyme and a little oregano. Now, we got our squab seasoned. And um, show you again what we're going to do is we're going to take that little, that little joint of the squab and eliminate that. You can save this, freeze them, keep them for your stock, make some buffalo wings with them. We're going to season the squab again. And then we're going to just put together this great little squab dish. Now, before I do that, let me just tell you, we got our rice. And uh, what I did is I took some salted water. And I've got some just basic string beans, green string beans. Nothing fancy about them. I just put them in uh, a little salted water so that they were al dente. They got a little crunch to them. And then what I did is I had a bunch of shallots around. And um, I peeled the shallots. You could use onions. And I just brushed them after I peeled them with a little olive oil and some salt and pepper. And uh, what I did is I roasted them for about 45 minutes, just until they were fork tender. And they get really, really great, really sweet and delicious. And I'm going to show you what we're going to do those with those as well. Now, we got our rice. And uh, we're ready to go. Now, we're going to take a little oil in our skillet. And uh, let's make sure we got some good heat on here. Yes, indeed. And then, once we do that, what we're going to do is we're going to start searing our squab. Now, while that's searing away, now what we're going to do is, it's not going to take much time. It'll take a few minutes on, uh, on each side. We want to get the skin pretty crispy. And we're going to flip them over, and then we're going to finish them. It's maybe going to take six minutes maximum, maybe, in the pan for that perfect medium rare. Now, 
We're going to clean off that board. Because remember what I told you, when you're working with poultry, you always want to keep your work surface and your knives extremely clean and sanitary with any kind of game bird. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take some of these beans. And we can be as fancy as we really want. You can take the beans. show you something here. You see this little seam that the beans have right there? Can we see that little seam? See there's a little seam right there? Well, what you can do is go against that seam. Go against the seam. And you can just take a knife if you really want to get fancy. And you can just sort of split your beans like that. I'm going to show you again. You go against the, the seam. And come down like that. And you can split your beans. If you want to get fancy, you can do that. The one thing that you may want to consider doing this is if you've got a, a lot of the beans that are grown in the garden for a long time, uh, it's a good way to split them and to make them a little bit more tender when the beans get large. But uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take these beans as a little accoutrement. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then we're going to take our roasted shallots. I'm going to add those delicious roasted shallots in there. I love roasted shallots. Wow. Let's go to our pan. Take a minute away from the beans. And now we're going to turn over our squab. You see that? Looks good enough to eat, huh? You see, I like when you pan saute in the squab like this, pan searing, I like when the skin gets really good and crispy, like it is right there. Because now we're cooking the meat side. And the meat side's not going to take that long because the meat side is, it doesn't have a protector. Like the skin or like the bone and the skin combined. So that meat is going to cook really, really quick. Now, let's go back here for a second. And I'm going to show you exactly how we're going to put this together. I got the shallots and the green beans, as I told you earlier. And simply, we're going to add a little bit of salt and a little bit of fresh ground pepper. Real simple. And then I got some really just some good olive oil. Just simple good olive oil. And I'm going to drizzle a little good olive oil on there. And just sort of toss these up. You want to taste them, make sure that they, they're seasoned good. And you can just leave that at room temperature. I mean, you, you don't only have to just saute or smother green beans. They're perfect like this, just room temperature like that. They make a great accoutrement to a lot of dishes, particularly the game birds. Now, what we're going to do, the rice that we made, our foie gras rice that we made earlier, I'm going to sort of mold inside of a little dish like this. And you just sort of press the rice in that mold. And then it makes it very easy to turn out and give you a little bit of nice decoration like that. And now, what we're going to do, we're going to sort of discard a little bit some of the oil from our squab, OK? We got it in there, nice medium rare. And what I'm going to do is just add just a little bit of stock. Now you could add a little broth. And we're just making a little pan sauce. I add a little stock, and we take our squab, and we put our squab on near our rice. OK? And then what you can do is you take that wonderful little green bean and roasted shallot. I mean, a perfect, simple little accoutrement. And we'll put some over here as well. And green beans and roasted shallot. I mean, it's so simple, but so delicious. And then what we'll do is we're just going to take our little pan sauce that we had and uh, reduce it out and add a little bit of salt and pepper. And then we'll just take that pan sauce and put it right over our squab, just like that. And you've got a beautiful, really, really beautiful dish. Very simple. A little pan seared squab with a little foie gras rice and a little accoutrement of green beans and roasted shallots. And I'm going to tackle another game bird when we come right back. Stay with me on the essence of Emerald. We'll be right back.
Hey, welcome back, and I hope you enjoyed that wonderful squad dish. And my next game plan <laughs> involves a pheasant, a bird that has been the food for centuries. I love pheasant. And this recipe makes it even more elegant by we stuff it, and we, then we turn it into a roulade. And if you've been to the restaurant, you probably have had some of these roulade dishes because I'm crazy about roulades with duck, with chicken, and this one with pheasant. Now, pheasant is a very delicate meat, uh, like a chicken. Uh, it's a little bit uh, gamier than the neutralism of, of chicken, but they're, they're really a lot of the same. And you can either go to your butcher or your local, some, even a lot of local markets today, and you can tell them that you want it boned, or what they call the classical term for this is glove boned. And basically what that is is they go inside and they take the bones out so that they can leave the bird, whether it's a duck or a pheasant, uh, intact. Another preparation for glove boning like this, the classical term, is when you make galantines. And you know, a galantine is usually they would take and leave the skin intact and take the meat from this and then actually take the meat and make a little force meat with the meat of that, with some herbs, etc., and then stuff that back and roll the skin intact around it and then roast it. But what we're going to do is a nice roulade. And what we need to do for a roulade is this. Cranberries, dried cranberries. Now, when you have dried cranberries, obviously what you need to do, because they are dry and they're sort of, you know, they're a little bit crunchy, is you want to moisten them and bring them back. And the term for that is to, to macerate them. Now, you can use any kind of citrus juice. I had a little bit of stock left over. I also added a little bit of orange juice to that, just to sort of bring it back a little bit. And you let that sit for about 10 or 15 minutes and those dried cherries will actually come back. There's a lot of great dried fruits out there. Dried cherries and apricots and dried cranberries and uh, they're perfect for little game birds. Now, I have some pecans. Oh, down there, my friends in Louisiana. And then I've got some cornbread. And the thing about this is that it, the cornbread can either be left over or you could just buy some corn muffins and crumble them up or you can make some cornbread. And basically what I'm doing is making a little cornbread stuffing that really, really works really well. Now, you saw how many difficult ingredients were in there, right? Pecans and cornbread, a little bit of stock. If you don't have stock, you can use water. And we're going to just mix this all up until the cornbread starts absorbing. Now, it's very important, as I said earlier, that you sort of let those cherries for at least 15 minutes or so macerate. Because if you don't, what happens? You're going to get all these little crunchy uh, dried cherries because this is gonna, it's got to bake. It's got to roast. And how do we do that? It's really simple how we're going to do that. Now, we get all of that mixed up. And what I like to do then is I like to just sort of take our stuffing and you stuff the bird, okay? You stuff the bird. I think you guys get the hang of how, how we do that with stuffing the bird. Now, when we're done stuffing the bird, I like to wrap it in bacon. And that's simply by just taking regular layout bacon is what they call it. And you want to wrap the bacon right around it. And then you roast it in the oven. And it doesn't take too long. It's only going to take about 40 minutes at 375 degrees. I've got my magical oven here and if you are unsure about the bacon working you see that that's that pheasant and then you let it rest a little bit and what I did is I tied it a little bit just to keep the bacon on it you see that and it bacon keeps it really good and moist and you can either serve it with the bacon or without the bacon. And you take a nice piece of that with the stuffing, a couple of nice slices. You see that? And with the pheasant, it makes it delicious to serve that with some root vegetables. And I've got some wonderful uh, little candied beets right here that I'm just going to serve them with. And boy, it's a delicious dish. 
I'm Emerald Lagasse, and I'll see you tomorrow on The Essence of Emerald.